What's up YouTubers, it's Chris here from ASM Scholarships. I'm also here with Brendan, what's up bud? What's up guys? We are back today, we are heading down to Miami. This time on a train, not in the car, we're on the big train here. Uh, because the car took too long last time, we got stuck in traffic on the way back from Miami Heat. So we're gonna give the train a go. Uh, however, we did miss the first one, so we're on the second train. Today, we're gonna go to Johnson & Wells, and we're gonna see the university, meet the coaches, show you around, and then we're gonna talk about golf scholarships, because we're meeting the golf coach, and explain to you how you can get a golf scholarship, and then turn that scholarship four years later to become a professional golfer. So stay tuned, watch the content, hope you enjoy it. event out there. Uh, okay. This year we're playing the red course for two rounds and the blue monster for one round. Okay. So nice. uh, we're out there probably once or twice a week throughout nice. throughout the year and we have a great relationship with them. We also play uh, Mel Reese which is down by the Miami airport okay. and they've yeah. had some PGA Tour Latin America events there um, as well as a lot of the pros in Miami awesome. uh, are down there like uh, Eric Compton practices there and a few nice. other guys. And then there's a course right down the road here from school. It's about a mile and a half called Miami Shores. Okay. That we're out there a lot as well. To have Beautiful. we have access to all those, and then a couple others that you know we use uh, occasionally if we need to. But awesome. Yeah, we have pretty much first-rate facilities <laughs> when it comes to yeah. golf courses. And Being in Miami for golf is not a bad thing. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Our you know golf room. It's, it's available to the men's and women's golf teams at mm -hmm. all times. Um, we have. A little bit of restrictions, you know, like not late at night, but all the other times it's good. They have a, they can scan in whenever they want to. They can, we have a code on their door, right. so it's theirs. They know what that code is, and we have a simulator, we have TrackMan, um, and then right behind us over here is we have a Sam Putt Lab as yeah. well that they have access to, you know, all the time. So, coach, if I do a good shot, like a scholarship. Oh, for sure. All right, man, I'll give it a go. All right. Um, it's been a while, though. What do we think? Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, we'll sign you up. We got All a piece right, of paper. Let's do it. <laughs> What's up YouTubers? Chris here from ASM. I'm here today with Coach Daniel from Johnson & Wells. How are you doing Coach? Good, very good. Good stuff. So thanks for inviting us down here today. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Looking at the facilities, they look really awesome. Uh, being a golfer myself, I tell you what, I wish I knew about this program already. For when I did this about 15 years ago, I had no idea you guys existed. So right. I'm glad we can get this out today and explain the program. But uh, let's talk about yourself first. Um, how long have you been coaching for? Yeah, I've been coaching for about 15 years. I've been at the NAI level for probably eight of those years uh, or so. I was at NCAA Division II for four or five years, and then I was at the Division I level for a couple of years as well. So I'm glad you mentioned this. You've done D1, D2, NCAA, and then the NAIA. Can you, I know a lot of golfers watching this won't know what that is. So what right. is the difference between NCAA versus the NAIA? Yeah. The, Probably the main difference is that it's just two or different organizations and they just have a little bit of different philosophy on how um, they recruit people, uh, how they make them eligible, uh, those things. So the NEI is a little more lenient than the NCAA in some areas and the NCAA does some things different in other areas. And so one of the biggest things is just uh, giving players an opportunity, um, especially if maybe they haven't met all the requirements uh, academically for NCAA that they would probably be eligible NAI, and that's something that is a big deal on the NAI end, is to try and help as best they can is get young players in uh, mm -hmm. to compete in the US. So one of the things that I realized being a golfer years ago, and lots of golfers are watching this, everybody thinks you have to go to NCAA Division One mm -hmm. to make the PGA Tour. Yep. Is that true or false? No, it's completely false. Yeah. Um, what you really need to do is put yourself in a position that you can play year round, uh, compete, is, uh, on a, at a high level. Uh, there's many schools at all levels that compete at a high level and you need to do that. And uh, another thing is just having a great schedule. Yeah. Um, the schools that uh, are that we play with and against and around, uh, we play some really great uh, golf courses against really good competition. Yeah. You and play like Beth Page you mentioned. Yeah, we played Beth Page Red. Uh, we also played um, the Copperhead course yeah. uh, and as well as PGA Champion. 
yeah. um, where they have the Honda Classic, and those yeah. are just uh, three that we've played, you know, this year so far. Yeah. And but you have to be able to do that. You you have to work on your game and have the opportunity, uh, like I said, to be outside um, working on those things and um, you know being around really good players to know what you have to do to be better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the opportunity is there to be a pro at any level. Um, and like I said, you just have to find the right fit for you. But I think weather is a huge part of that. So really, like the NCAA, the NIA, it's really like in, in Europe terms, it's like you know the Premiership versus the Bundesliga. It's just different right. names for, for mm -hmm. leagues. Yep. Um, so this program specifically, I know you've produced some uh, some tour players. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how many tour players have you had in the last couple of years from this program? Uh, just a couple here and there. Yeah. We had uh, a couple other guys in the past uh, that have played as well. And right. you know, once again, it's just the opportunity. And yeah. you know, the biggest thing about being a tour player is once you're done with school. You know, what opportunities do you have? Right. Where do you want to live? Um, but by coming to a place in a warm weather, you start to meet people. Um, you start to play golf courses and meet people there. And next thing you know, you have a place to play. Yeah. A place to practice afterwards. Maybe you found someone who can help you financially um, through those first part of your career. Because yeah. a lot of times that stuff is really tough to do. Yeah. And I think that's one of the biggest things is just putting yourself in a position that you have access to a lot of people who are playing golf, who love golf, uh, who financially can help with you know what you're trying uh, to accomplish as a, as a professional or as a career? That's what I love about this program. You're bang in the center of Miami. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're in the, the Florida Sunshine State. Yep. The golf courses in Florida are the best, pretty much in the country. And I think what you touched on really importantly is that all the golf businesses are here. Yep. So you're in the right area to, to get your name out there, playing in the big tournaments that you're playing in. It gives you that opportunity, you, like you said, to, to get noticed. And that's yep. what college for me was all about, was to get your name out there, to get the sponsorships to turn professional with. Right. What are you looking for in a, in a golfer watching this who wants to yep. come to Johnson & Wells? What, what, what do they have to do to qualify for this program, academically and also golf-wise? Yeah. Academically, you know, anyone who has essentially a, probably a 3.0 or higher, is someone we like to have because they're going to get some academic scholarship with that. Um, and then we want people who want to work hard, uh, who want to get better, who want to have a goal of being the best that they can be. If that's being a pro, great. If it's being a great college player, that's that's awesome as well. Um, it doesn't have you don't have to be a, a pro, you know, to to be a successful golfer. Right. And so I, we want people like that. We want people who are coachable, um, who want to come down and. Work hard, and but they also have to have an inner drive right. to be to be great, you know. Because um, college golf, uh, no matter where you would go, is you need to have that. And with us, we really need to have that. We want people that uh, want to get up in the morning uh, and have a have a goal or a commitment that they want to do every day to get better, and that, not just one day, but for a week every day. Yeah, yeah, I remember uh, my schedule. Months, was yeah, intense. Yeah, it's, it's it's an intense thing to do yeah. and play college athletics because. Uh, there's only so many hours in the day, and you got to be in class. You know, for some of those, you certainly need to study uh, others. And uh, the other part of it is you, you got to work on your game. Yeah. And, but that's what we want here at Johnson Wales. We want people who are self-motivated, uh, who are willing to be coached, and to know that it's it's not easy. And uh, to be successful in anything, it's not going to be easy. You got to work at it. So, so touching upon that, I mean, I remember my schedule. And lots of athletes we've placed over here. Their schedules uh, are tough, but. What is the schedule like here at Johnson mm -hmm. Wells? What, what would it be like a normal day for you guys? Yeah, so our week is a little bit different than a lot of other places. We actually do not have class on Fridays. Oh, so our, Yeah, so our there you go, that's... exactly, it's a good thing. <laughs> so our student athletes, they'll go to class on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Right, right. So some of them actually only go to class on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And so they have Monday, Wednesday, Friday to really work on their game. And then obviously the weekends as well. Um, some guys have a couple classes on Monday, a couple classes on Wednesday, and then a couple on Tuesday, Thursday. Um, so we give and have a lot of flexibility in the sense of being in class, but also getting better at their game. And that's one of our benefits here is, like I said, not having that Friday class. Um, so we, we're always on the golf course on Friday. Yeah. You know, typically we're playing in a qualifying manner or we, we're traveling or something along those lines. And then during the week, in that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday time is more spent on their game. Mm -hmm. like working on specific things you know to get better um, that they need to so then they're ready for the next qualifier the next tournament whatever that might be and the 
the equipment, because I know as a golfer, you love getting goodies, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So do they get like the, the clothing gear, oh, yeah. the shoes, the balls? Yeah. Is that all yeah, included? Yeah, everything is included. The only yeah. thing we don't do is we do not buy them clubs. Right. Um, now that we have access to every company mm -hmm. and there's a discount. Get the trade prices. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Exactly. So that's where we're at with that. But yeah, our guys are going to walk away by the end of the year. They'll walk away with probably, you know, seven shirts, four or five shorts, a couple pairs of shoes, golf balls, a new bag, um, head covers, you know, you name it, is we try and take care of them. And so the final thing I want to touch on is a lot of athletes that we get start this process in our eyes way too late, mm -hmm. right? They, um, they, for example, they're a 17 year old athlete, maybe from England or South Africa, and, uh, and they start the process like in March, when right. they're just about to finish their school, and then the recruiting cycle is already finished, and then they're like, oh, I can't get in anywhere. Right. When do you recommend athletes to start this process uh, mm -hmm. to get a golf scholarship, either for here or somewhere else, what would you yeah. recommend, being a coach for so long? Yeah, I would I would recommend starting your freshman or sophomore year in high school. I mean, it, and people who are later, it doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. It just may not be you uh, your first choice. Yeah. Um, but, there, but the right choice may come along because you ended up waiting and those things. But no matter what your scores are as a freshman or sophomore, and you would you know love to come to the U.S. to play, is send that stuff out. Yeah. Um, get your name out there because you never know, like if you're in the US playing in an event and they've seen your name in an email, they may come watch you play. You may play yeah. great, next thing you know, you're on their radar. Yeah. Um, or when coaches come over to uh, overseas, whether that's mm -hmm. Europe or other places, then uh, they're gonna know and have an idea of, of names. You, know, yeah, you yeah. can't get your name out uh, early enough or often enough. Yeah, exactly. And those are two things that are pretty key. And I think a lot of times um, young players think, well, I'm not good enough, and so I don't wanna send this. Well, you need to send it. Yeah. And as time goes on, hopefully you are a player that improves and you never know when someone may be looking and at what time. It may be right before your senior year mm -hmm. and that's the right time for you yeah. um, that someone sees you and notices you and you may be able to have something offered. Sometimes it's someone that's a freshman or sophomore because they're maybe a little better at that age. But yeah, I think the earlier the better um, because like I said, anytime that you can get your name in front of uh, a coach yeah. as often as important. And how much more powerful is it to have, say, uh, someone like us contact you and, and bring a player that we know is a qualifier for you versus, you know, athletes just emailing you? Because I know for coaches, a lot of emails every day, you don't always check them and you miss stuff. Right. So what way, what way is the better way? What yeah. do you take more awareness from? I take a lot more awareness from an organization that's sending it to me. Um, most of the time within that organization, I have a, a relationship like, like we have with that. you. Um, that it's important for that to occur, and when they, when an organization says player, you know, A is someone you really need to look at because they have good grades, they're a hard worker, they do these things. That means a lot more than if it just shows up in an email, and then you're trying to go back and forth with that player, and you're mis, you know, you're disconnecting this, and it's not working at all. But we basically can always get a hold of the organization to yeah. get that process started that way, and then that leads into getting connected with the player because then it's like, yeah, I really want to talk to player A. Right. Can you make sure player A gives me a call or we set up a Skype or we set up a, you know, a WhatsApp or whatever it may end up being uh, to make that connection. And so, yeah, working with organizations uh, with a relationship is, is key, you know, for us as a program to be successful. Coach, will you be at the uh, College Golf Conference this year in Nevada? Yes, I will. I'll see you there, bud. Right, hey, perfect. thanks for your time yeah. so much, hey. Yeah. Appreciate it. No problem. Cheers, guys. Johnson and Wells gym right now, talking to Brennan and the coach. We're gonna get a workout in here with the team, get some muscles in. Hey, they got a nice gym, I must say. This is a pretty sweet setup, check it out. Hey you guys, so hanging out with the coach and Brennan on the ASA team. What I love about Florida, any school really in Florida is that you get a swimming pool on campus. I mean, how cool is that? Go class all day, play your sport, and then take a swim in the pool. Love it.
All right, so I want to do a quick review of Johnson & Wells. This is a week later from when we filmed it. Uh, we just got so busy with traveling. Um, that show in London right now, off to Dublin to go for one day, then back to uh, Miami. Uh, but I want to just give you a recap of what I thought of Johnson & Wells as a golfer myself. Uh, I can really kind of give you a good insight into, into the program. The first thing I will say is this, I was blown away by the program. Um, you know, uh, if I had known about Johnson & Wells myself 15 years ago, it would have definitely been in my uh, watch list of a program to check out. Why? Because you're in Florida. You know, you have the sunshine all year round. The home golf course they play at is at Doral. Um, great golf course. So, you know, you're playing at a, a championship golf course every single day. Uh, they also have other golf courses available to them. But uh, for golfers, it's the best location to be at. Now, in terms of the, uh, the university itself, you're literally about 10 minutes from downtown Miami. You're about 10 minutes from the beach. You've got a great shops around you. I mean, there is nothing that you're missing. You're in the, one of the best locations you can be in. Families, parents, you probably think about safety. Miami, you probably think about, oh my God, it's dangerous. Miami is dangerous, no, like any other city. There are certain areas where you don't want to go, but the university is not near those areas and you're never going to go there unless you want to go get some trouble. So I wouldn't worry about that. And they have the on-campus security as well. Um, so, you know, obviously this is why we do these shows is to kind of give you an insight. So, you know, I have a son now and when he gets older, I would definitely send him to Johnson & Wells if he, if he wanted to play golf. So there are other good options around the area. Um, you know, you've got Lynn, you've got Barry, you've got Nova, you've got Kaiser. So there's a lot of competition. Uh, but what I like about this program is an NAIA program. So if you haven't, say, got that Division One school um, that you were looking for initially, the coach is super cool about going there for two years and transferring. And um, some programs don't like that. The co this coach is super cool about it. So I think it's a great stepping stone platform school to achieve that. They also have a great uh, education program and they specialize in, if you want to be a chef, uh, culinary um, programs as well. So if you're looking to be maybe a chef in the side, you want to study that, so that's definitely a great spot to be at. So uh, overall, I think it's a fantastic uni. You've got the golf. I mean, you've got the best place for golf. Um, you're in one of the most exciting cities in the world uh, and it's, it's a great stepping stone if you want to go for the D1 in a two years time you can use it for that you can do it after one year but normally coaches saying two years is what most athletes stay and then they transfer to D1 if they have the ability to do it so um, check, check it out if you're interested to learn more about that Johnson & Wells University hey DM us send us an email Our email is a uh, 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 asm at uh, asmscholarships.com we've got so many emails I forget um, you can also reach me out directly if you want at chris at asmsportsgroup.com uh, that's my email I'd love to see any golfers that want to know more would love to help you out so thanks for watching tuning next week we have some more footage coming in from this London trip from the Spain trip and from the Ireland trip and uh, if you haven't subscribed already give us a subscribe up there and also click the bell because if you don't click the bell you won't get notifications of new videos so thanks for watching guys we'll be back soon and i hope that really helped with the review for johnson and wells yeah.